in your textbook. They're on pages 266 and 267. We're going to do them in a slightly different way, the way that I do them, and then it's up to you whether you choose the textbook way or the way that I'm instructing you. We're also going to do an example using the Born Harbor cycle method um, or the energy level diagram, as I've been calling it, just to make sure that you understand the difference between the way it's shown in the textbook and the way that I'm doing it. OK, let's get cracking. So in the first question, it's asking you to determine the enthalpy of solution for sodium fluoride. And it's given you this data here, which I've just written up in the corner. OK, so you're going to be referring to in order to calculate the enthalpy of solution for sodium fluoride. Now, the way they've done it in the textbook is that, well, I'm not going to go into it. You can see that, but I'm going to show you the way that I would suggest you do it. So first of all, let's think of how we define enthalpy of solution. Well, it's when one mole of the ionic solid dissolves completely in, in water, basically. OK, and that's what I would approach this question with. I'd approach it with that first equation. OK, so we're actually breaking down this ionic solid or dissolving it in solution. So we've got NaF as a solid. And that is being broken down or kind of split up, let's say by the action of those very polar water molecules to Na plus and F minus. And remember, these are then AQ. Their state symbols will be AQ. And therefore, the enthalpy change that's going on, as indicated by this equation, is the enthalpy of solution. So delta H and Sol. OK, right. And we don't know that value. This is what we're trying to find out. And it should be quite easy to spot the alternate route here. OK, this solid could be broken down into its gaseous ions. So that would be Na plus F, both of these as G, like so. OK, and a plus and a plus, sorry, and a minus there. Whoops. OK, those are the gaseous ions. And what we've actually got here, this process here represents the lattice energy, but not according to our definition. This is the lattice energy, but we'd have to reverse the sign here because by our definition, lattice energy is when one mole of the ionic compound is formed from scattered gaseous ions. OK, so effectively, if I put the arrow in there, this minus um, 902 value represents the red arrow direction, okay? So we need to be careful because we're going to have to reverse that sign. Now, essentially, we're talking about the same thing. We're still talking about lattice enthalpy, but we're giving it a uh, direction, aren't we? Okay, we're saying that this is from going from gaseous ions to the solid, but we're not looking at the root that way. We're looking at it as going from um, a solid to the gaseous ions. So we're going to have to reverse that sign. And although that might seem complicated, I think it's a lot easier because you can just think of this then. We've got this then being hydrated to go from the sodium scattered gaseous ions to sodium in aqueous solution. We're talking about the enthalpy of hydration, aren't we? And it's the same here for the, for the fluoride ion. We're talking about the enthalpy of hydration there two values which we have here, okay? Now, they do follow our definition. There's no need for us to worry about signs there, okay? So it's fairly simple. I better write that in. This would represent the delta H of hydration, obviously, for the uh, fluoride ion. And this would represent the delta H of hydration for the, whoops, oh dear, I'm trying to copy that, copy. These are both enthalpy of hydrations, OK? And this right here would represent our delta H lattice. I better write that in too. But we have to be aware of our sign reversing. I really apologize for the quality of the writing. I still have a touch screen and I'm, I'm trying to write out here with a, a mouse, which is a disaster, to be honest. I'm going to put a star there, just so you remember there's that weird thing where we're having to reverse the sign there because it's not following our lattice energy definition or the one that this value is based on. 
So you can think of two routes here. Essentially, you can think of getting from here to here by taking that route, which is what we don't know. Or you can think of doing that by going this way, going around like so. OK, now it's not an energy level diagram, so an energy level diagram is going to improve our understanding of this. So I, I'd start writing this out in the following way. OK, you've got to start with something, you know. Using values, you know, values that have been given. So we could say, well, uh, start here with your ions up here and these are in a gaseous form we've got a plus and f minus again that would be gaseous form so effectively these are scattered gaseous ions if we take this journey down here i use proper arrows if we take um let's take a step down whoops uh, wrong way whoopsie daisies okay i'm just going to draw them out so if we go for example from what we've got there to this what I'm changing here, as you've seen, I'm adding an AQ here for the sodium. In other words, this change here, this enthalpy change here, is representing the hydration enthalpy for the sodium. Okay, so this is minus 406. The reason why I put this arrow pointing down is because I'd already seen the value here was minus 406. So I can put that in there. Remembering that the exothermic ones will be a downward arrow. And obviously, I've only got one enthalpy um, kind of accounted for there. So I've got to leave the fluoride ion as a gaseous ion. This is slightly different from the textbook again, just because I'm trying to break it down into steps. And I think it's better doing it this way. Right. If I put another exothermic arrow. OK. And why have I put it as an exothermic arrow pointing downward? Because I've seen this value. It's minus five zero six. So I know it's a downward pointing arrow. OK, and that is now representing, obviously, there's no change here to the aqueous sodium ion because that's that that change was done in the previous set. So now we've got a fluoride minus ion, which is aqueous. And effectively, what you've got here, this is like the final step, really, isn't it? This is your solution. So I'm going to draw a line under that. And that's basically where we want to be at that solution. And we can contain the whole energy cycle within here. So, right, what are the values we got? Well, we've been given the lattice enthalpy. Now, remember by definition, lattice, lattice enthalpy it involves the formation of one mole of the lattice. That would be NAF, and we need a solid sign there. OK, and we've got that value and they've given us an exothermic value because according to the definition, it's the formation of one mole. They are giving you this value based on lattice energy being the formation of one mole. So we can put that value in there and it's minus nine zero two. OK, well, I've got a gap here. Well, what is that gap on about? I'll do that gap in red. This going from this right here to this here is the delta H of solution, OK, because you're going from one mole of the solid to one mole of the ions completely dissolved. So this right here, and I'm not going to put any direction to it because effectively you don't know the direction yet. OK, this could be positive or negative, could it? So I'm just going to assign that as X. That's kind of our unknown. So let's just talk of that as X. So. If we knew the value here, if we knew the value for x, that would be uh, the easiest way to deduce this cycle. But we have to take an alternate route. So what's the other route? Well, you could either do this, which was the easy way, but we don't know the value. Or you can just go around. You could go this way. We are still getting to the same place. OK? So you're going from here around. You're still getting to the same place. That's the same as going from here to here. The two things are the same. I should put that in a different color, probably. Going from NaF as a solid to um, the ions completely dissolved is our lattice enthalpy, sorry, our enthalpy of solution. But we, we don't know it, so we go and take the other route. So we just need to add up all of these. X effectively equals 
this plus this plus this. It's that simple, okay? And then we think about that. Well, what does X really equal there? Well, it equals the lattice energy plus the two enthalpies of hydration, which is how I would um, explain this here. Because look, we've got the lattice energy here plus the two enthalpies of hydration. And that's how we would get our enthalpy of solution. So in a way, the way we write it here is pretty much identical to the way you'd see it in the energy cycle, which is different from the textbook, which I think overcomplicates. So we do have a slight problem here. When we're choosing our direction to our reaction here, we need to make sure that if we are going against the grain, against the arrows, then you're going to have to reverse the sign, which is the same reason why I had to reverse the sign here. OK, that's why I put that star there because we're going against this minus 902. So effectively, we are talking about that being endothermic. You're going up, okay? The value represents the idea of the downwards arrow, okay? You're going against it, you must reverse the sign. Not a problem when it comes to these two arrows though, because you're following the direction of those arrows. You're going with the grain. So you'll be adding those without changing their sign. So that would be plus minus 406. And the next one would be plus minus 506. So if we just add that up, hopefully I've made, haven't made any mistakes. Nine, zero, two. I'm sure a lot of you mathematicians can do this in your head, but I'm rubbish at maths. So. No chance. OK, I've got a value of minus 10. And the textbook value is exactly the same, OK? So our x, which represents our delta h of solution, equals minus 10. Obviously, we've got to be careful to get those units in kilojoules per mole, OK? So we've got an exothermic enthalpy of solution there. Delta h sol is minus 10. So I've tried to explain using this energy cycle, or born harbor cycle, exactly why I think it's better to draw things out like this. Okay, and hopefully the two things um, go together quite well. Now, let me just uh, write this out in simple terms. If you want to know the delta H solution, then you quite simply, so this is basically representing what X is now. Okay, if we think of the two things as representing exactly the same thing, delta H solution was our X. We need to go delta H lattice plus the delta H hydration for both of our species there, okay? So I'll just move this across. Plus the delta H hydration of the fluoride okay i should have put this symbol in here very much struggling with the mouse so let's just be clear this was for the sodium and this was for the fluoride ion okay and the other thing to bear in mind is you've got to be careful because you're going against the lattice energy definition here which means if you're going to use this technique like i do you're going to have to reverse the lattice enthalpy sign OK, now hopefully that has made sense, both the Born Harbor cycle diagram or energy level diagram and the way in which I've chosen to do the calculation in the more simplified form.